I've been looking for revival Cause what I see it's critical for all of our survival People turning on each other, love is put on a shelf In exchange for some hate and some greed to get wealth The world's become a crazy place, it's everyone for themselves So go and grab all you can get because it's gonna run out We've been fed that lie so long now we believe without doubt Seems it's coming to a close before we figure it out How many years will we live this way? We just sit back and hope we'll Well, this is a bang going to be using We've got uh, fresh mackerel there, we call But for some reason, smooth hounds don't like mackerel um, but the taupe do. So it's a bit of a balance. What are we going to get on this mark? I suppose slightly more chance of a smoothie. So this is how I'm going to rig my smooth hound bait. It's a whole squid, but I'm not going to use a whole squid. I think that might be too big for the smoothies. So as you can see here, what I've been doing is just whack the head off there. Okay, now some people take that out inside. It's what we call custard, because it does look like ugh, custard. But I leave that in there. That's all juice and smell. And I've got a regular 6-0 hook there. A couple of times now I've got to pop it over the eye of the hook. And I don't ever snip my knots back too close. So I leave that as a little tag there. Because I can pop the bait over like that. And I feel that is like a little retainer. Holds it, stops it sliding. Otherwise it just slides down in a sort of gobby bunch at the bottom. It just, I dare say they take it. But I don't like it. I like to be a bit neat and tidy. Roll the hook around. Put the point back through. It's going to lay down like that in the current. Hopefully, the tote, the smooth hound, skate, bull husk, conga, whatever it is, comes up from down tide. He's going to scoff the back end. Even if he gets half of the bait there, starts pulling backwards, that point should be having some sort of grabbing or holding point. And in this particular instance I'm using, as it's fairly slow tide at the moment, it's going to increase uh, just a plain running ledger on an up tide rod. And I'm going to be casting it out to the side of the boat and across the current, across the flow. Imagine a river. Try and think of it as a river. We're obviously anchored, it's like a river, it's going down there. Instead of dropping the big baits straight down, I can fire out a couple of small baits here. Just pick up fish that are over Ooh. the side of the boat like that. I let some line just spill off. Let it hit the bottom. If you stop it too early, all it does is swing back in towards you. So let it spill out like that till you feel the bottom. When it's down, I close the bait on. One turn and I just... I just leave it so it's not tight. I do not want to lose the rod. I've got 11 rod holders on High Sea Drifter, my shark boat here. Got plenty of space to put rods, and at different angles as well. This one in particular I use for my up tiding. If you look there, the rod holder is actually pointing out sideways. I've cut both ends off it. That's a normal one. And I've got it so it sticks out from the side, as you can see there. In other words, I've got four rods down the back. Four rods and a thresher shark rod with a 50 wide down the middle, shotgun, just in case. And I'm going to put a couple of up tide rods out to the side. Now, when the tide does increase, I'm going to have to take that bomb off, the plain lead, and put on a grip lead. It's got spikes on it. Let me show you one for you guys of all. These are what we, in the UK we call grip leads. These sort of break free. They just grip up like this. They, they pull into the seabed like an anchor. And then when a fish pulls them out or you wind in, these pull free like that. Really brilliant and excellent for up tiding. All we got to do is say, do you feel lucky? Well, we are here out in the Solent. I haven't been on the boat for a year which is probably the longest period of time for me not being on our own boat. Um, it's been really, really quiet. The radio's been quiet. We've just had... It's a weird day. It's a real strange day. There's even no wind in the Solent, which you don't really get. It's, it's absolutely oiled off here. There's, a, there's no wind at all. It's really strange, and we've just had our first take. We've been here probably, I'd now, say, about, yeah, 45 minutes. With the, the chum's obviously gone out, and we've got the... the well, you can't really see the chum slick because the whole ocean's slick. But is it going to be something that we can tag? I think so. It's a good take, definitely. Quite a strong take. Took some line off. And, and he's hanging deep. The yeah. tide What's the prop there? Is... Oh, oh nice that. ray. Nice ray. It was a good take yeah, yeah. for a ray. Yeah, good take for a ray, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good fish. Thornback. Better than a blank. It's better than a kick in the wedding bells. Well, there we go, people. A nice 
Thornback Ray, the hook fell out. It literally fell out onto the boat. But a real aggressive take for a Ray. It was, wasn't it, yeah. Yeah, really, really aggressive take. We certainly thought it was a smooth hound or maybe a tope. But um, you can see the, the telltale signs of the thorns going all the way down the back there. Hence the Thornback Ray name. Also goes right up over the eyes. Just above the eyes there. And also down here on the edge of the flank. Just smaller spikes there. Most of the, the dangerous kind of spikes are down on the tail. They get bigger as they go down the tail. Don't grab them by the Don't tail. Don't grab the tail. What you do is there's a kind of a cheek muscle here. Do not go near their mouth. They will crush your fingers to pieces. But just to the side of the cheek here is very soft and fleshy. And this is a bit of cartilage here. A little slot, isn't it? Really? Sort of, and it just naturally goes where your fingers can go there. And you just get two fingers either side and a thumb that side. And then you can lift them up to the cameras like that. And they've got lovely eyes to them sometimes, these these fish. But he took that bait, that was on a mackerel. And he took the, well, fresh mackerel, because we've been catching mackerel today. Like nothing, you know, like coming out like Smarties, aren't they? They are indeed, yeah. Lots of mackerel. Uh, it's gin clear water. I've never seen the Solent so clear. But um, yeah, awesome fish. We'll get him back, get a little bit of underwater footage of him. Uh, the tide will be changing soon. So it could be uh, could be a state of the tide thing, we reckon, today. Yeah, yeah. Well, normally we'll get a ray over just as it goes slack. It's going slack, I'd say. Now, looking at it, it's starting to get definitely a bit slower. But either way, I'm chuffed with this. We'll get a quick photo and we'll get him back. On this one, you sure? have to take this rod. There's definitely a bite on that rod. I've got a fish on this rod. Yes. I'm not. There's 100% of a fish on that rod. A minute ago. But you got one there. There's definitely a fish on this rod. I don't, I don't know. know what it is, but it's. I'll tell you what. It's not a bad fish. Let me oh, put this. Smooth hand. Take your time. Smoothie. Ease the drag. Oh, it's a big one. It's a big smooth. Ease the drag, Mike. Right. Ease the drag. That could be a big fish. Sorry, guys. We're in a mess here. No, he's rapping, he's rolling. It might be a tope. It might be a tope. I'd ease that to keep that drag. It's a wheeled, horrible drag on that reel. It's one of the world's most horrible reels, but it was free. It's well It's wrapped. a towel wrapped tope. Watch out, it's a towel wrapped tope. It's not, it's a smooth hand. No, I think it's a tope. Is it? Yeah, I think that's a tope. That's a smoothie. Was it a smoothie? It's a big smoothie. Yeah, he's rolled up big time. Let's get him in. See if we can get him untangled. Where is he? You got him? Yeah, he's in there. Oh, I've got the camera tangled. It's all around my feet. That is a decent smooth hound. That's a nice fish. That is a nice smooth hound. Nice big one, double figures, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, that's definitely a double. That's a double figure Let's one, have yeah. Let's look at him. Now, that's the sort of thing we can tag. Yes. Is he gonna go nuts in the boat? Absolutely not. Is he gonna ruin my new magnolia floor deck? Let's get a good grip on the tail. Yeah, that's Underneath him, you've got him. <laughs> he hit me on the nose. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I, excuse me, I said it like Wayne. What a beauty. That is a cracking smooth hound. Nice fish. I love the size of their pec fins. Yeah, well, that's where you get a lot of power, don't they? Yeah, for the, for the size in proportion with the fish, they've got massive oh, pecs. The poor boys, mate. He's got a terrible wind, that one. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? But you can see the, uh, the, dot, the lovely white dots on it. That's lovely. a long fish. If they had a belly to it, it'd be up in the teens, I'd say. Yeah. Definitely see the relation to the shark family, can't you? Absolutely. Let's get a tag in him and measure him. Okay, guys, here's the tag. That's the stainless steel cannula or dart. That's the tag that's going in there. I don't put it in my finger first. Just goes in that little slot if I can locate it. Should have gone to spec savers. That's the cylinder of information. I hold that. I normally got a little hand tag, but this is my, my long one for doing big sharks when you're in the boat and you can't get the shark. You can dart tag uh, the fish. And then you put it just behind the door, so anywhere along the meat of the door, sort of along there. Hold him down. It's in. You can see it didn't bother him a bit. Well, it certainly didn't bother me. And then, while he's nice and Oh, Jesus. Is that fish? I hear a reel going. I hope it's not a shark reel. <laughs> Gonna do an overall length of this one there from the nose. I'll do a total length. You can do a fork length, but they don't exactly have a fork, as you can see. It's not like a V shape. So I'm gonna go total length is, it's a long fish, this one, I'll tell you. There we go, that's the nose. That fish is 41 inches long. 
that's 41 inches, smooth hound, female. So we're going to log that down. Mike's going to put it back. And there you can see 358004, whoever catches it. Who knows? Guys, it is so exciting tagging. I can't tell you. Some of the fish I've caught thousands of miles away. This is well worth putting back with a tag in it. Mike, do the honours, please. Well, Mike was right. In fact, there was another fish. We nearly had one right over the side. So it's a crackerjack fish he had. I don't know what this is. I'm guessing being packed fish. It might be another smooth hound. Yeah, it's another smoothie. It's not as big though. I think I might be able to just swing this one in for you. But we will tag him anyway. And do you know what they say? They say they like the smaller fish tagged because they've got more longevity. It tells them more where they're going. If you tag a big old fish, it might have had its life. It's not really got the time span, the lifespan left to tell you anything. Whereas a smaller fish, longer time living, hopefully the scientists can learn a bit more about it. Guys, you can try these disgorges as well. They've got a little slot in them. I don't know if you're going to be able to see that there. Like a ring. You place the ring over the line, slide it down like this, over the hook, pull the line down to reverse it, and then just shake it and look, that's off. The fish is beating me to death, but the fish is off the hook in a millisecond. It's a brilliant tool. Should be one in everybody's tackle box. All right, let's rest this one down. While he's laying, or she is laying, nice and calm like that. You can see, as Mike said earlier, about the size of these pectorals, this is where they get the power from. Nowhere near Mike's fish. Mike's fish was 41, this one's 31. Still tagging material though. That fish, all ready to go back. And you can see that little cylinder streamlined, it's facing down the length of its body. And some of these, I believe, have lasted. They had a shark, I think it was off here. I think it was off the Isle of Wight, a poor wiggle shark tagged. I think it was about 23 or 27 years it lived for. That's a poor wiggle shark again, I say, off the Isle of Wight. Factual, tagged, caught off the coast of France, I think it was. Let's get him back. Oh no! Oh no! Oh sh! Oh sh! I've got a smooth hound on here. I've knocked the brake down on this wonderful reel I'm using, which is my worst reel I've ever used, I think. But. Is he still on? The drag's gone totally. Is it? What a piece of. There it is, guys. Don't buy it. Oh, I think we lost a fish. No, no. he's still on. He's got that line. Oh, he's got that line. Oh, this is going to be a cluster and a half. <laughs> Good bend. Yeah. What we're going to do is try and get the fish. I don't think I'm going to get it. It's run through the lines. What we got is absolute slack tide. Just look at all this weed coming through here now. Rakes and rakes of weed. I don't believe we're going to sort this out in time. I'm going to haul this one in, guys, because if it goes round, oh, that's not a bad one. He's got the other lines, I think, but nice smooth hound. Nice tangle. <laughs> yeah! Yeah! Oh, 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 <laughs> and you know what they say across the pond? It don't get no better than that. Come on, babe. Come to Graham. Don't fall off. I've got a very nice tag waiting for you. Along with a brain surgeon to undo all this tangle. Ties turned, hooked up. As soon as that, oh, that flood started, here he comes. It is a, another smooth hound. I do like this spot. Here he comes. Let's get him in and tag him. All the weed has gone now. Absolutely all the weed's been taken. We had to sit here for an hour. And the problem being when you anchor, a lot of the time the boat swings, your lines are up and down, it drags into snags. It's a nightmare. Sometimes, take our tip, just wind the lines off the bottom. And when the boat's swinging around like this, it drags the lines vertically off the bottom rather than drag them into snags. It's well worth almost not fishing for an hour until that tie gets right, rather than just keep snapping off and re-rigging. 
as they say on one of those tuna programs, welcome aboard. Trouble brewing. Could be a doggy running away. Don't we shall know. see. Lock up. I can't even remember what I put on that one. Fish on? There's a fish on there. Oh, that's not a doggy. No, it could be a rat, but it's taking some line. Still what is taking. That? If it's a doggy, it's a damn big no, one. No, it can't be a doggy. And it's not it? kicking like a ray. What Got a bit of kick to it though. Yeah, what is it? Let's go Watch your other lines. That's yeah, it. Go yeah. under those or under. I'm under all of them. Here. I'll pull him up on the left. About there. Yeah. Under the shark line. And then take it in that gap. Lower your rods here. Just around the shark line. I think you're clear. I'm not clear of the end rods. That's it. That should be okay. Quite a bit of banging on the tip there. I'm not yeah, sure what that, that is. can't be a doggy. Unless you've got a big lead on here. How big's the lead? Well, no, they're like leads because the tide's not too bad. I'm not sure what this is then. I'm curious as to this one. What do we think, people? Have a guess before we get it. I want to say small conga, but I think it's probably a ray. It's, yeah, it's not planing yet, though. Or a bull hus. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. Something different. I don't know, that's weird. Maybe, I guess a ray, it was a bit of a it's slow like, take. I'd say a ray, yeah, it was a ray take, definitely. We've got something nibbling on our right white rod over there, the pulling classic. The old pulling classic there, marlin rod. Yeah. Nibbling away. I'm not sure what this is, but I think Keep it might it nice be a ray. And smooth, it's starting yeah. to plane up now, so it could be a ray. This is about the flattest day at sea I can recall down here. Yeah, it's lovely. There's a ray. I can see it. Can you see it white yeah, under the... I can see it. Yeah, they plane in the oh, tide. I think I just got it through the other lines as well. I think you might be on the inside. No, is it a ray? What is a ray? I see some it's white a ray. there. Yeah, no, a ray. ray. What type? Thorny? Thorn. Oh, nice one, though. Oh, that's not a bad ray. Yeah. Now, are you over or under the other I'm rods? Under all of them. The love was put on a shelf in exchange for some hate and some greed to get wealth. The world's become a crazy place, it's everyone for themselves. So go and grab all you can get because it's gonna run out. We've been fed that last so long now, we believe without doubt. Seems it's coming to a close before we figure it out. How many years will we live this way? We dress it back and hope one day that all our cares will go away and everything will be okay. Without change, we can have satisfaction. Don't tell me to relax when you won't go take any action. But even with these problems, I'm the internal optimist. I keep on pushing forward when it hurts and when I'm sick of it. Well, there we go, folks. My second thorn back of the day, cracking thorn back. Uh, another female. This one's got thorns, much much bigger thorns than the other one. Um, but really, really good, really good fight on this fish. And um, you can tag these. We've actually seen uh, one tagged uh, down on the Bristol Channel off Watch It on Steve uh, Yendel's boat, Scooby D2, and that was in Springtide Episode One. You can actually see one of those where we recaptured one. We got recaptured one, and uh, we took down the details on the tag. And we gave it to I think it was Swansea University. Or I something. think it was. We were yeah. trying to track them down. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's good. To, it's good to do the tagging and releasing, guys. Uh, people say, do you eat? Do you eat? Do you eat the fish we catch? We don't really eat the fish no. we catch. If you watch our films, all most of the films we put most of our fish back. So what we got? We got one, two, three, four down tide rods. Self-explanatory, down the tide, down the current, anchored on the bottom. A pair of up tide rods going out sideways and a thresher shark mid rod down the middle on my shotgun position with a 50 wide reel on it, a 50 pound stand up, tuna stick, which we've taken bull weevils and various sharks, hammerheads to over 500 on there. So that's gonna catch anything. It's a bonus, don't get me wrong, it's a bonus. We've got two chum bags over the side. It's a good job I've run out of rods. Yeah, it is a good job. There's definitely far too many rods out there. <laughs> definitely too many. You've brought, have you brought another one? <laughs> Choking. Just in this You table. can't fit. There's not another one on the boat. Don't recognise that, do you? Oh, you're joking. <laughs> you are joking. Mike I, had that when he went to uni. <laughs> 107 years ago. Five pounds, that was. Well, he Look didn't do rust. any work. He just specialised in going out partying. <laughs> And you paid five pounds, didn't you? Look at the rust at the tip of it. Oh, it's been well maintained. I think I used it about three times. No, I've had some great fun on it. I just put, do you know guys, this is, I've had, and Wayne used to come out with me, and he's had little fish on this. It's, we have more fun with this than anything, I think, given the right tide conditions. I'm gonna give it a whiz through now, to be honest, but why not chuck a telescopic rod in your tackle box? Look what space it takes up. They extend out. They usually, the rods are not too bad, it's the reels, the line usually yeah, is what you need to. The drags are just horrific, it's like, it's like a dead parrot being dragged <laughs> along a motorway or something. <laughs> Awful things. 
but it works. It's functional. I've changed some line. I've also lost some line. It's not much line on there. <laughs> but just get some like ten pound line on there. What's, <laughs> the, what's, the, what's the oscillation like on that thing? <laughs> it's got like one to one. It'd be good for the small species, though. No, I've had lots of small fish on this. I use it for catching bait and stuff like that. But because it's telescopic, I can put it inside my tackle box. I can chuck it in on the shelf, in on the uh, cabin in there. I can get a pair of glasses. I was just see. about to say I that. Just, I can see how big the ring is. <laughs> Those rings, can you imagine? Guys, don't get old. Look how big that diameter of the ring is. And I still can't get it through. I'll put these on. They tell me they help. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a lead at the bottom. <laughs> Got it. I'm going to put a lead at the bottom. Two small hooks on the top. Don't go away. Don't go away. I'll show you. There's a pair of small carp hooks like those. About size two carp hooks, lead on the bottom, paternoster style, two strips of squid, hey ho, nothing to lose, I might even catch something. Yeah, well I did actually see the bite over his shoulder while we were doing the filming on the thornback. I guess it's something like a pouting, but there it goes. We talked about using things like telescopic rods earlier on, and it is, look, it's not going to set the world alight. It's a little black bream, but if I hadn't put that little rod down just to play with, Five pounds, the whole lot, five pounds. I wouldn't have caught that. Always put a bonus rod down when you're out for bigger fish. Only possibly small, small fish, small bits of squid. But listen, it's an extra bit of sport for me. It's going to go back. I'm not going to keep them, rarely keep any bream. It's just nice to catch something. Oh, I love it, I do. There he is, sitting in the cabin, and I'm over here with his rod. By the way, for the uh, tackle tarts among you, this is a Boys Toys 210 and it just collapses completely. Hopefully not with the fish on. Oh, it's only a double header of bream, that's all. Oh, I love it. There you go. Oh, it's falling to pieces. <laughs> <laughs> it fell to pieces on me. <laughs> it's still catching though, guys, the most important. <laughs> Where did it go? Where did the fish go? <laughs> the most important thing is, is it's catching fish, isn't it? And that's what it's all about. Do you know what? I'm having more fun with this little telescopic rod and these little fish than I am on the big ones. Brilliant sport. Brilliant rod. Just an idiot using it. Fish. Could be. Filming from the luxury of the cabin in High Sea Drifter. Oh. Yes? Get in! <laughs> you in? It's a fish. Yes. Fish on. It's fish on. Like a feeling. It's one of those barking sort of fish. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it could be a dog fish. It could be a doggy. Too easy. Yeah. I just saw a little tap on the rod while I was shaking a chum bag again. Let's see if I can get... There's definitely a, a bend. See if I can get nine or ten lines at the same time. Well, I've got one. <laughs> no, that's not a doggy. It's not? He don't be a doggy. Is he a hound, though? He could be. Let's get myself sorted out. I want to keep him away from the keel. Keel? Yeah, but with the boat, it's a hound, small mm. hound. Average out, I suppose, eight pounds, six, eight pounds. That'll do, that's probably... Oh, he's still got a lion, did he? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, look, here he comes. I'm going to ease him in slowly. He doesn't even know he's caught yet. He's going to go mad any minute. Uh, I'm going to get that hook out of there. Watch your hands. That lion. See that weed? You can see the tide ripping past him. Yeah, oh, he's hell of a tide running now. Let's have sorted out. Let's bring him in anyway. Here he comes. Hook just hanging there, guys. Amazing. You see the hook there? Yeah, right in the scissors. I'm on 80 pound mono. So you should come straight in. And, with a bit of luck, hit me in the wedding gear. <laughs> Didn't hear anything ring, so that's okay. <laughs> Pop it with the heel of your hand like that. How easy was that, folks? Yet another. Nice. What's that about number nine, I think, isn't it? Eight, I think, I think so. Eight, eight, eight nine, yeah. two or three. Raise a load of a load of mackerel. Yeah. Two small black. What a day. Tag in. He's going back. Who knows where this one will turn up next? Well, could be on a totally awesome fishing show.
At the rate we're catching them, we're going to be catching our retags. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be a rerun. Yeah. It's like television. Oh, television, sooner watch YouTube anytime. Well, guys, there's a tag in that one. The small ones are prone to go nuts. You can cure this with anything. Watch out if you do it with Spur Dog. It's called Tonic Immobility. And if you turn them upside down, absolutely. Doesn't have to be in the water. If you turn them upside down, they go into tonic immobility. I can put my face there, normally I get slapped in the face. If I turn him up the other way, it goes mad, okay? I'll show you, just show you again. Carefully upside down, tonic immobility, doesn't hurt the fish at all. Enables me to put him back like this, and as soon as I turn him up, he'll be away. Keep him upside down, it's a little totally awesome tip for you, and Away he goes. Ho, ho, ho. I love it when a plan comes together. That was lucky. He could have gone back. Fish on, fish on, hit it. Hit it. God damn it, I missed it. <laughs> that was... Oh, he won't tell me to hit it. <laughs> it was in. It's raining now. It's starting to get some rain. Are you still there? Is he there? That's, uh, that's, that's bream bites. That's bream bites on there. The hammering. Hammering bites. Sharp tap. I can feed it right through the braid. But there was a bigger fish. By the way, guys, if you get black bream with spikes, I don't think tonic in my works with it. The handful of spikes. It's like trying to do it with perch. Yeah. <laughs> it just wouldn't work. Well, guys, this could be number 10 fish. I can't uptide now, as I told you. I've gone from the bomb, to the tide picks up. I go to the grip lead, tide picks up. Now it's barreling through. I've had to go to a straight bomb cast slightly down tide, but still got me a fish. Pretty sure it could be a small smoothie. It is indeed, he's on the surface. You can almost see him like a shark's fin there. There he is. So we've had a cracking trip. There's the fins. Two, two fins, a dorsal, the primary and the secondary are pretty much the same size. You can see his fin and a lovely, they used to call those starry smooth hounds, but in fact, there's no such thing as a starry smooth hound. They're actually the same species, DNA proven. DNA proven by scientists. There is no such thing as a starry smooth hound. So, let's get this chap in. I hope you've enjoyed watching it. We've had a real laugh. We've had a ball here catching fish. We only wanted to catch a couple just to show you the tagging. Let's get this kitty in. Come on, slowly, slowly, slowly. It's very unusual, this one, because those astute ones and observationists among you might have realized it actually is not tangled. I'll tell you what, it's not, half, it's not a halfway bad one. So we're going to try it again. We're going to go for. Go for it. What's it called? It's called, folks. That is so weird. <laughs> that is so weird. That is called tonic immobility. <laughs> Does it work or not? Believe me, it works. Slightly turn him over then. But do not try this on your wife. <laughs> That's going mad. <laughs> going mad. Put him upside down. And just get him by the back carefully. <laughs> that is the weirdest tip. Bubby, Bubby, all right. Well, Bubby, okay. All right, Bubby, we'll put you back now. Remember that. Don't let them crash around too much. Tonic immobility is a way to go and see fishing. You heard it first on the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. We should be doing this with our fish when we unhook them. I feel like that's a cocktail of some sort. A what? I didn't look. No. Oh, sorry. <laughs> tonic. Tail. Tonic. I'm not, I'm not looking for the rest. Tonic immobility is, is how it leaves you after you drink oh, it. Oh, oh no, a screamer! Right. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Hold on. Oh, now he's on. I can't hold the camera. <laughs> and our man's on again. Now we also come to the point here of the last cast. <laughs> this was supposed to be the last drop. And I'd noticed we got hit out of sight with squid bait. So I said, we'll have one fresh last bait. cast, putting fresh bait out with squid while we pack up and get rid of the chum. Uh, we might have to have another last cast. That tide is absolutely ripping. It's now. ripping past now. It's another smoothie. Yeah, it's a smoothie. But no other lines with it. That's a major result for the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. There's some uh, tonic immobility coming up. Right. <laughs> yeah. There's a jumper. <laughs> 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 
These are crackers, these fish. In he comes. Yeah. Now, let's see if you've got the golden touch. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so. Wait for it, wait for it. Turn him right upside down. Is he going to work for the sun as well? Come and wait and wait. Yeah, look at that. Hey. Tonic immobility. It works. Well, there we go. Going to release him. And he's off. That had some energy, that one. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the show, guys. Lots of awesome tips in there. I've certainly had good fun being here. This is the first time I've been on the boat since for about a year, so it's been awesome. And when I'm sick of it, I sit and then I think of it Get up again and recommit to be a part of something that could bring about some benefit Gotta bring change from the inside out Gotta stand up, lift our voice and shout Gotta turn it around From the streets of the cities to the government games From the homeless and the shelters to the buildings and flames We gotta turn it around We gotta turn it around From the presence of the people, money running the game Someone's always in a pit, someone has too much, and someone dreams of more.